Welcome back. You're watching Newslink. Now, Build One South Africa's Musi Maimane is still considering whether to attend the Moonshot Pact Convention or not. Earlier, the DA's John Steenhuizen said the pact is taking shape with five party leaders already agreeing to attend that convention. Let's speak to him. He graciously joins us in studio this morning. Thank you very much for your time. What is it that you are considering about the Moonshot Pact? Thank you so much for having me. I, th I think, first of all, I always think that election 2024 is absolutely crucial for the people of South Africa. Secondly, it cannot just be a matter of just saying let's coalesce to just remove the ANC. Or we, have, we have to consider the full agenda of what this country needs. Mm -hmm. I tabled a 10-point plan to which I think that's the conversation we need to be having, to saying this is what we want to do for South Africa. So put a job in every home. We want to make sure people are safe. We want to educate young people. We want to ensure that ultimately we have an effective state. Once you discuss those things, mm -hmm. and then you say, here's the alternative really, then you can coalesce. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll end up in a room and only discuss positions and only see what's happening in some of our metros. I've always stood strong to say coalitions are necessary but they cannot be predicated simply on positions. They have to come through on saying, here's a plan, and it's not just a function of saying, let's just remove the ANC EFF order. Mm. And I think that's one of the major concerns to any South African looking on at the situation in that, what are they going to be discussing that is going to concern the South African uh, citizen? And what about these conversations will make sure that we're putting personal or party agendas aside and focusing on the growth of the nation? Have, uh, have you got those concerns and have you started having discussions that are encouraging in your opinion? So this is my submission to, to the pact. Yeah. And this is not just a unique call. There are, there's the umbrella pact. There's, there's already been meetings with opposition leaders. But even within that same space, I've raised this concern that it can't just be a political coalition. Yes. At the same time as that, we've got to invite civil society to come and be part of the discussion. This is about South Africa and South Africans. There are communities that must be involved in the discussions. Then you broaden the engagement so that whatever emerges at the end of that is a solution for all of South Africa. That's why when I talk about building one South Africa, we've gone out of our way to say, let's build with all South Africans. Because where's the voice of the business community coming into this conversation? Because when it's said and done, leadership and governing isn't just about changing colors of parties. Mm. It is fundamentally about giving leadership to society broadly and including all citizens together so that we can deliver a prosperous South Africa. If to me you are just simply inviting me to say, well, let's remove black, green and gold for these colors, yeah. then at the end of the day, really, you might end up governing the same way as it has always been governed and not achieve the sort of change you want to see. Yeah, uh, the reality of the matter as well is that uh, the uh, black, green and gold, as you mentioned it, as well as the EFF, are going to be a part of the elections. It's not that they're not going to be getting any votes. And so the conversation is going to have to include them as well. Is this something that has been considered as yet? Or is this pact set to remove uh, them entirely from office? Look, I mean, I think without doubt, we can't tolerate aspects of corruption. We yeah. can't tolerate this idea of the fact that our economic outcomes, citizens are struggling. People cannot find work. Inflation is going up. And yet we've had a government that stayed in place that hasn't done the job. So whether I accept it or not, we can't just keep going along the black, green and gold train. We can't just keep going along the ANC train. But to change the ANC train isn't just saying the only problem we face is corruption. Yeah. It's also about saying, what is the plan? Are we achieving a digital infrastructure? Are we fixing ESCOM and keeping the lights on? Are we fixing rail and logistics in the country? Are we ensuring that education outcomes are improved from 30% to 50%? All of those conversations move beyond just a discussion about whether it's the ANC or the EFF. They really have to animate us as citizens to say, here's the plan. And that's what we've tabled. That's what we're negotiating on. And I'm not going to shy away. And if there are elements, elements even within the ANC who are corrupt, I'm not going to sit here and simply say, well, we can work with those elements. It, it, it is the surest way to regress society yeah. in its entirety. Yeah. What would be the deal breaker for you not to be a part of the pact or to attend the convention? The deal breaker would be if it doesn't have a plan, 
if it's only a discussion about picking which party and which parties are not, and if it doesn't include broader aspects of society, the last thing I would say, which is absolutely crucial, is that we must respect that every person who attends the pact, broader than just the political parties, must have an equal say. Because if you arrive in the pact and you simply say, well, let's take historical numbers of elections and then simply decide who's this and who's that, then we're going to end up with fairly difficult problems because it means civil society and all other players cannot be included naturally mm. because they weren't in the elections in 2019. So let's really craft an alternative world for South Africans to be enthused by to come in and say, I want to build and be part of this. If we fail at that task, really, it's just playing political games. Yeah, so the IFP uh, Action SA, the NFP, FF Plus, um, and the United Independent Movement have all come on board so far um, with the DA on this particular pact. Does this mean that the narrative of the DA is changing in that it has been seen um, as an arrogant party that doesn't uh, necessarily meet the needs of everyone within the country? Do the different parties that have chosen to uh, attend this convention, to have these conversation, conversations mean uh, that the view or the narrative of the Democratic Alliance is changing somewhat. You know, when I led the DA in 2016, mm -hmm. we worked hard on coalitions. We ensured that the coalition in Johannesburg, you'll recall, it lasted. It didn't fall, fall apart, apart because <laughs> of anything. It lasted when, until Herman Mashaba resigned as a function of their internal politics. But the coalition stood. Mm. So I've always felt that there's an opportunity to lead to bring people together. In fact, that's the role we, we want to bring, to say, how do we bring people together? That's why we've organized ourselves that way. As to whether there's narrative and all of that, I haven't been engaged in the recent mess of coalitions that we've seen. I've merely just said, when you have principles, when you have a plan, and you work with people, you can achieve coalitions, mm -hmm. and you can make sure they work for the future. And so, so that's the job. I'm not really focused on what the DA does. If this becomes a DA pact, yes. then I think we've lost already. Yeah. This must be a South African pact focused on the future of this country. And I suppose the important thing here is going to make sure that the affairs of the state and the different political parties are kept separate from delivering services to uh, the nation. When 2024 is said and done, South Africans must be able to go. They have a government they can back. They have a government that has a plan. And they have a leadership that is ethical so that it can deliver against that plan and that pact. That's the that's the deal. Mm. If we don't achieve that, it will be a complete waste of time. Mm. Have you met Mr. John Steenhuisen, or is that no. something you're still going to do? No, no, I have not. We have uh, our team has submitted our response accordingly, and we'll, we'll be able to communicate that. And over a long period of time, I've engaged every party yep. in this country and have been meeting with them respectively, so that we can have this conversation, Mr. Holomisa, Mr. Mulder, and many others, mm. because we must build even in civil society in communities. We've always said, as Build One South Africa, the last people, the first people you want are communities and community leaders so that they're engaged. Mm -hmm. So I've been involved with that entire process and that's what we're building. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us in studio this morning. Uh, that is a Build One SA leader, uh, Musi Maimane, joining us in studio.